circular, I can hardly see. I'm like, you want to move myself forward a little bit? Well, if she's asking, then yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be better. I'm going to get this thing or something. Otherwise, I'm going to be like, okay. Yeah, that works. Okay, great. I'm going to turn it on, and we're going to get going. All right. Can you hear me? Not very well. Not very well. Last time you were on the salsa. Hmm. Oh, we heard you then. You can hear me now? Okay, great. He can't hear me. Okay. We are one. Mic one. Hello? You can hear me now? Okay. Wow, I'm very loud. Everybody can hear me. All right, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, afternoon, actually. And uh, welcome to our next Let's Talk Integrity and Ethics uh, discussion here. Um, so I'm Cindy Gillespie. I'm the director here. This is, if you'll just yeah. introduce yourself. Hi, Melissa Stone uh, with DDS. Uh, Robert Williams, Division Count Operations. And Mission Martin Children and Family Services. Okay, so thanks for joining us. We promise we won't take more than 15 minutes. Amy will make sure that we stay on schedule. Uh, we've got an interesting topic today, social media, um, which is, you know, it's funny. Social media has become such a big part of all of our lives, and it's one of those things we want to spend a little bit of time on Partly because a lot of people don't really think about the fact that when you walk out the door, everybody walks out and they go, okay, I'm off work, and they get on social media. And they don't really think about the fact that when you work at DHS, it doesn't matter that you've left here. You really represent us 24-7. And um, one of the core things to remember around social media is always to think about the fact that one of our core values that we we want the world everyone here in arkansas to see in us is respect you know that we have respect for each other that we have respect for our clients that we have respect for those we serve and that we act with respect to our co-workers and we are respectful so social media becomes a big part of that now, the way I'm going to start this is actually something that I don't know how many of you actually think about this, but because social media is so prevalent now, it has become a standard part of what every company and organization uses as part of their hiring process, including us. But I don't know anyone who hires anymore that is part of hiring. They don't go out onto social media and look to see what they can learn about the applicants that they're interested in. So what you put out there matters. It matters for your future, and it matters for the way people will see you. Melissa, we were talking about this a little bit yesterday, and um, as someone who hires here and who sees how we operate, why don't you talk a little bit about what goes on in an employer's head as they're looking at you on social media? Yeah, so not only do we, well, DDS hires a lot of people. You guys know that. We're a, a, a large division. And um, not only do I, I feel like I get down in the weeds on hiring direct reports to myself, I sometimes, depending on the job, uh, want to see registers on other positions. Um, especially positions, like Cindy is saying, that are um, publicly facing and that I know we're going to run into a lot of uh, clients or a lot of um, uh, employees. For, so an example was that was the blue umbrella. So as you guys know, Linda Scales went back to being a nursing home administrator. So we were sadly having to replace her at the blue umbrella. And we had an overwhelming response. Um, and once we started going through resumes, once we got a list together on who met the preferred qualifications, I looked everyone up on Facebook. Um, which I'm encouraging our HR and the rest of our supervisors to do. Um, you can learn a lot from what people post on Facebook as to whether or not those are appropriate people that will accurately represent um, DDS and DHS. Because we have some good employees and we'd like to keep it that way. So, I mean, it's a standard part of hiring now. It's just what employers do. I have. And it's not just around young people. I have um, a, a dear friend of mine who's in her 50s 
that did not get a job simply because when the very large international company went and looked online and didn't like some of the things that they saw from back in her past several years ago, right? It's, it is reality. We're warning y'all about that, okay? For your own good, be aware of what you post about yourself, whether you are hopefully advancing here or you go look for a job somewhere else. Just be aware, it's not private. And it's also not private a lot of times, even if you think you have, are posting in a private group, all right? Even private groups are not private. So don't be, uh, don't be thinking that it is something that you can put out there and no one's gonna pay attention. And that kind of leads me to the next point, which is, you know, we work, every one of us here, no matter what you do, because you work for state government, because you work for DHS, you are very much in the public's line of sight, right? So it may surprise you to understand how often we get screenshots about things that our employees have posted. Robert, why don't you talk a little bit about what goes on in that area? Sure, definitely, definitely. And, and you know, we work with them. I don't think they can hear you. You can hear me? How about that? That's good? No, there we go. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, Cindy, uh, definitely. Uh, we work within the community. And the individual we associate with in the community, we uh, go to church with them, uh, we go to recreation activity with them, and we intermingle with them. So when we leave work or we get caught up in those activities, and then you come back in on any form of social media, you get so in-depth into the conversation and everything, then you find yourself divulging confidential information, sense information that we are over, we have oversight over. Um, at times, we always uh, know that we got to protect that information. And as the alluded to earlier, it's all about respect. We communicate with our friends and our neighbors, and then we get, in, get on social media with someone else and don't realize that we're divulging information, confidential information, intimacy, that uh, information that we discuss with them, that we document in their records and things. And I don't want that our behavior. Uh, you got co-workers, you may be a manager over co-workers, and you send derogatory things on Facebook about your co-workers. It could go in the form of bullying. So we got to be very mindful of those activities and, and exactly what our state of mind when we communicate that. Uh, and like Cindy, and as I said earlier, as we move forward, you got to think about what you want in life, your career. Because this is some, this is an imprint that's basically going to go with you for it. Where are you going, what you desire. So we have to keep that in mind. So we just want to caution you and, and be aware when you are in social media, please realize that any information you put out there, it can be screenshot and, and sent up and is a part of your record. Yeah. Uh, you know, Robert and Misha, I, I know both of you and you uh, do receive screenshots from people in the public. Would y'all like to talk about that for a moment? I can add to that. I mean, I think people would be surprised at how many screenshots of Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, that I receive and um, people think that they are sharing privately, maybe with their friends, maybe on a closed group, uh, but maybe they don't realize what their friend does in the line of work. Maybe they go to church with their friend or maybe they are in some community group and they don't realize what their occupation is and their occupation is directly related to us in some way and they're offended by a post or they think that the post is acting outside of what a DHS employee should do. And frequently I get screenshots of here's what was said. And sometimes it's as simple as, um, you know, there's a lot of secondary trauma that happens in child welfare and people feel the need to vent and communicate that trauma. But what ends up happening when you use social media as an outlet for that, maybe you're not sharing a specific name in a case, but you're, it's Arkansas, we're rural communities, we all know each other. And even in central Arkansas, there is some connection on Facebook, I promise you, who knows that case, who knows that family, can put two and two together and is familiar with that situation. And you're breaching confidentiality even if you're not using the specific case. And there are outlets. You know, we have EAP. I think Cindy would want to talk about, you know, our integrity hotline where you can report things. But, you know, specifically if it's about venting an emotion about a frustrating day, there's more appropriate outlets than social media. And we do see instances where, uh, to Misha's point, where employees 
sometimes post something because they're concerned about something going on at work or um, they're venting about something. That's why we've created this integrity hotline, all right? That's so, it, venting may make you feel better. If you will send something instead to the hotline, we will act on it. I mean, that's why it matters, right? Don't just get upset about something that's going on at work that you think is not good. Take action on it, right? And send it in so we can actually look into it and see what needs to be done. We get a lot in through that hotline and we're running every one of them down. So use that, don't just vent publicly. Uh, because everything on Facebook really is public. Um, now that we've talked a little bit about some of the don'ts, um, maybe it's worthwhile to give you a few do's, you know, some things that can help you. Because uh, honestly, dealing in uh, public information, dealing out there in social media can also be a little bit scary. When you start to realize how uh, public your information is and how it is used by others to look you up and to see what's going on, it can make you then a little bit more concerned. So um, I know that all of you have taken steps to make sure your information that's out there publicly is more safe and secure. You want to share some insights into some good do's? Yeah, so I'll just say I, I made a decision a couple of years ago that people can't just add things to my timeline, right? Um, I put that security feature on that if you're going to tag me in a photo or if you're going to post something on my Facebook page, I have to approve it first. And that was partially because there's some photos that maybe um, I, that I've had too good a time and I don't want posted on there. Or uh, maybe somebody's mad about a Medicaid change, which has also happened, and then they post something kind of mean on, on my Facebook page. <laughs> and so I learned that you, there's a security function that you can go on there so people, you have control over what your own Facebook page looks like to the public. Well, and I can say that a do, a do for me, um, which I will relate back to privacy, is I do share photos about my children. And so Facebook, um, in this line of work, it's hard to connect with all the friends and family that I want to. And so Facebook allows me a way to share um, about my kids and family. But in the same token, I did make sure that privacy, you know, that my page is private, but that you won't see my children on my cover page or um, my profile picture. Um, because I don't want my kids out there for the whole world. So um, you have to be careful. A do might be to share about your family, your grandkids, and your kids. But then the also do is make sure that your privacy settings are in a way that you're protecting them as well. And a, a lot of people um, anymore are getting to where they are concerned about their kids' photos right. just being out there. And so that's something to be aware of um, when you take photos you know, of yourself and your kids with a family friend and their kids. Before you post someone else's children online, make sure they're okay with it. Uh, get their permission, because a lot of people really don't want those photos just out there. You know, like me, I'm me too young lady, like that. I'm a novice in it. So I, I, took, <laughs> I took what they said about how, how to protect your Facebook account. Because normally I just, uh, just got started just looking into it. So, uh, I learned a lot from me too, young ladies. <laughs> security. Yeah, I think security is a huge issue, but I think social media can be a real positive, especially when it comes to how we're so involved in the community. So not only um, a do would be to share DHS's message and DCFS's page, but also we have amazing partners like Project Zero. And whichever division you're in, I'm sure that you have amazing partners out there in the communities that are on social media. So sharing and promoting those positive values, I think, is good for your community as well. Yeah, it is. It's always so much fun when you see, um, it's like the one this week, some great videos out about the farmer's market. Thank you. That, <laughs> on Friday here. Uh, on 10 a.m. 10 a.m. <laughs> we are going to have, uh, yes, our, we are going to have our first farmer's market, which is going to be so great, yes. right? And there is a great video that has been put together by our communications team around the farmer's market and it shows, you know, our clients at the HDCs working and beginning to pull the vegetables and it's just so exciting, right? It's really fun. So it's, that's posted out there on Facebook. I've reposted it online. I've shared it. 
It's always fun to see, though, I have friends in Arkansas now that do not work here, and they're sharing it out in Arkansas, you know, and so that's really great, right? Social media can be a wonderful, wonderful thing, and it, I know, as Misha said, it connects me to family all over the country, friends all over the country, and it allows me to share with them and for them to see what's going on here at my work in terms of these wonderful videos and things, and it also allows me to keep up with them as family and them to see what's happening. But be cautious as you use it. Remember that, as one of you said, it is a permanent imprint. It will always be there, even if you delete it, it is still there, and that it has now become something that is actively used by employers, and because you are at DHS, and we hold ourselves, and the public holds us to a high standard, people look at your Facebook page in that way. So be really conscious about that, be very aware of it, protect your own security. If you have questions about protecting security on it, I'm going to just throw Amy Webb out there. Um, please feel free to email her and the comms team will be more than happy to help you figure out what to do and how to make sure that you're comfortable using your Facebook page. We're not trying to scare you away from it. We're just trying to give you a little advice of good do's and don'ts. So thank you for joining us today and um, we appreciate it very much. Thank you for all you did.